I'm telling you all of this because there's a part of therapy that, or, or a type of working therapy that is so enjoyable, and that is working with couples. Very enjoyable. I find it enjoyable. Sometimes it's really difficult because sometimes there's a lot of strife, a lot of fighting, a lot of uh, misunderstandings, and it's difficult to navigate that. But working with a couple is very, very, pla I, I, I really love that kind of work. And uh, <clears throat> particularly when things work out, which I don't know how God smiles upon me, but it's most of the time it works out really well and it's awesome. So people always ask me, but what do you do? Because I don't diagnose people. I don't tell them what's wrong with them. I don't tell them what problems they have. I do something different. I talk about forgiveness. And when I talk about forgiveness, people tell me, yeah, I resent him for that. I resent her for that. See, I'm talking about forgiveness, but the vibrations of forgiveness expose lack of forgiveness, which we call resentment or resentment. And so people start discussing what they resent one another for. So then we break into individual sessions and we work on forgiving their partners for that thing, whatever that thing is. So forgiveness is a big deal. Notice, I didn't diagnose anybody. I'm simply talking about forgiveness. I use concepts from A Course in Miracles. I talk about what a holy relationship is according to A Course in Miracles and how forgiveness is a big part of all that. So when a person, when a couple is with me and I'm discussing these ideas in a very nonchalant way, in a very, in a very um, informal way, we're just having this conversation. It's not a lecture, we're just having this conversation it immediately brings up the lack of forgiveness or the resentment. It's like, it's like me talking about food, you know, you, became, you, you, you get hungry, right? So talking so much about food makes you aware of lack of food or hunger. So I begin to talk about how awesome a life of forgiveness is wherever we feel a lack of forgiveness that comes up and people talk about that. And then I say, look, A Course in Miracles teaches us that we can all choose again. Perhaps at one time you chose to resent your partner, but now you can choose to forgive. And then people typically tell me, yes, I want to, but I can't. That's when we break into individual sessions and we use hypnosis to help a person let go and forgive and all this. That's a different topic, right? But eventually we achieve that. Then we do another session together. Now both of us have forgiven. What else is going on? Oftentimes when there's forgiveness, there's a huge rekindling of the relationship because there was love there, but the love was covered up by resentment. Now the love can flourish again, but then typically they come back after a while and say, yeah, we got along for a while, but we just don't understand each other. When I hear that, I already know what's going on because it's so common. So there's this man, uh, Gary Chapman, wrote a book about the languages of love. And this is a topic that I have written extensively about in my journals and in, in, in other places for years before I was aware of the book. I think his book is a masterpiece. I think the way he explains it is the best I've ever seen. And I think that it, it, it's a book that if you haven't read, I highly suggest you read. I think it can change your life. It's extremely well written. It's very well done. I think he does an excellent job. And yet, I don't think any one of us would think that that's a new idea. For instance, in neuro-linguistic programming, we talk a lot about modes of communication. Some of this stuff goes back many, many years, you know, like the concept of it. We don't all communicate the same way. When I took introduction to teaching in graduate school in the mid-90s, when I was in the PhD program and you learn how to teach at university, they talked about learning modes. People don't all learn the same way, so a good teacher has to be able to explain the same topic in different ways. So we repeat the same explanation. Some people ask me, why do you repeat it? I already got it. Well, because I'm a teacher and teachers repeat it, but we repeat in different ways because you might have a class with 200 students in the university, at the university, and people learn differently. So I present the same topic by analogy, appeal to authority, 
by descriptive, by, you know, by different ways. And I, and I try at least three, four, five different ways of explaining the same thing. By the end of my classes, people tell me I got it. You know, because we cover this stuff in many different ways. It, some way it's going to stick in there. You know, so the notion that we don't communicate the same way has been around basically forever. Gary, Jam Gary Chapman puts this in this book form in a way that I consider to be brilliant. I big applause to this guy. I think it's a, it's a wonderful book and I think it has helped so many people. And in essence, what he says is, look, you can love someone, but if you don't communicate that love in a way that that person feels loved, you know, even though you love them, they're not going to feel loved and therefore it's not going to work, which is, brilliant, which is true and brilliant. So what we have to learn to do, it, because how do we communicate love? We communicate love the way that we want to be loved. So let's say it's not my case. Let's say that a person really feels loved when you buy them a gift. So I don't, I don't feel loved that way as an example, right? So you might, let's say I'm in a relationship and the person buys me a little gift, a little thing, a shirt, a pair of socks, a little thing, a little watch, whatever, you no know, little gifts, just as a little reminder that they love me as an example. So. I don't pay attention to that because it doesn't matter to me. I have way too many things in the house anyway. I'm always throwing stuff out, giving it away. You know, like I'm trying to declutter. It, it, it almost bothers me to any because I don't need anything else. Whatever I need, I go get it. And so the, the, if the need is to convey love, I don't need the material, the, the physical object, right? But that woman, let's say, who's buying me a gift, hypothetically, right? What she's really doing is telling me how she wants to be loved. So in buying me a gift, what she's saying is, look, I love you, so I got you a new tie. What she's telling me is, dude, the only way I'm gonna feel loved is if you buy me a gift. So I pay attention to that and say, okay, let me buy her flowers, I gotta buy this, I gotta buy that. You know, it doesn't bother me, but it isn't how I feel loved and it isn't how I love. So true love is about being willing and able to give to the other person what the other person wants to receive. Not what I want, but what the other person wants. You see, so buying gifts may not be my mode of expressing love, and it isn't, but if this one is always buying me a gift, you know, eventually I will tell her, please don't buy me anything else because it just clutters up the house and I don't want it, but, but I got the point. You feel love that way. So I'm gonna go, I'm going to train myself to love you the way that you want to be loved. And now I gotta buy her a card, I gotta buy her, it doesn't have to be expensive depending on the situation, if I can afford or whatever, but, but it has to be something in her love language so that she can feel loved, right? So when a couple is in distress and they say we love each other but we don't get along, we love each other but we don't understand each other, what's really happening there is they're not feeling fulfilled. And they say, we love each other, but we don't, you know, it's not working. They're not speaking the same love language. Not my love language, but her love language. And presumably, if she loves me, I'm, I'm using this as an example, she would have to learn my love language and express her love, if she actually loves me, in my language, the way that I want to, the way that I feel loved, because it's not going to be, in other words, in this example of buying gifts, right? She can buy me all kinds of gifts. I won't even pay attention to it. You know, and sometimes I don't even open the package. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't register as something that, 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 that matters to me because it really doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter if it's expensive, if it's, it doesn't matter to me. And so I know it sounds a little weird and I'm not trying to be pretentious or anything. It just doesn't matter to me. So therefore, it, it, um, it, 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 you know, it wouldn't cause me to feel loved, you see? So, it goes both ways. If I want her to feel loved by me, I have to study what she's doing, and I have to do, I have to express my love to her in her way, in her language. Let's say that it is gifts. I have to buy her gifts. Let's say that she wants to spend quality time, and she's always asking me for quality time. 
Let's go to the movies. Let's have a dinner. Let's do this. Let's do that together. I want to be with you quality time. That's how she feels loved. You know, even if it's not my way of expressing love, I have to do that for her if I want her to feel loved by me and vice versa. A lot of couples have not heard of this idea yet. And when I explain, they try it. They read the book oftentimes and they like the idea. But then after a while, they realize that it's not so easy. In other words, if my thing is to buy you gifts, I want to continue buying gifts because I'm good at that. Right? I'm, I'm switching the example here, but I'm giving an example. Now, you feel loved by words of affirmation. In other words, you want me to be telling you I love you all day and I want to be telling you how wonderful you are all day. I don't like to talk about it. I like buying you gifts. Can't I just buy you something and be done with it? Well, no. You say the love is about communicating your love in the other person's language. That's what the whole challenge is. And that's where hypnosis comes in. Do you love this person? Yes, I do. How does she need to feel loved by you? Oh, she needs words of affirmation. Are you good with words? No, I'm not. Okay, let's work on it. I'll help you be good at it. I'll hypnotize you and extract that out of your system because it's in there somewhere. We just have to get it out. Do you see how we use conversations about books and ideas to expose what's lacking and then use hypnosis to incorporate that same thing with forgiveness exposes resentment love languages expose to a certain extent our habits and our selfishness you know i want to do things the way i like to do things not the way you want them done that's essentially i want to have this relationship on my terms not your terms but it won't work that way so then we use hypnosis. In other words, the conversation exposes what's lacking. Then we use hypnosis to feel the need. We do the same thing with sexual polarity. You know, the male energy, the female energy. There are certain books that we discuss. And then we realize, okay, I'm lacking in this area. Let's use hypnosis to bring up that energy. What's going on here? We can fix that. We also talk a lot about attachment. We don't all attach romantically the same way. So we need to discuss attachment. And that goes back to early childhood and we have to fix that with hypnosis. And when we do, couples get on their way. Because we didn't create the love. They already loved each other. That's why they became a couple to begin with. But then every couple goes into this crisis mode that needs to be improved. This is completely normal. I hope this material is useful to you. I would ask you the favor of considering subscribing to the channel. You've listened this far to this video. If you're getting value out of this conversation, I'm going to ask you two favors. And I think that if you do what I'm asking you to do, speaking of the other person, language, right? If you do what I'm asking you to do, I think it's going to enhance all of our experiences. If you would be so kind as to subscribe to the channel and comment below the video on your thoughts as you're listening to me and ask questions which I can then answer, I think we're all going to get a much better experience. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you. So I bless you. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you.